Many moons ago, I built a battery tester, which was for testing nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium cells for capacity. And it turned out it was quite good for testing alkaline cells too. And this is good because um, I happen to have quite a lot of alkaline cells which I've just tested. But first, uh, let's take a look at the tester. It's a clock. A quartz clock. And my reasoning was, with this, that um, if I attached a pointer to the hour hand and put a resistor across the battery, then theoretically, with the, with the nickel metal hydride cells, um, as soon as the voltage tailed off at the end of the charge capacity, which happens with nickel metal hydride, they tend to suddenly go from fully charged to flat um, at the end in a very sudden step. And my reasoning was that with a constant current of 500 milliamps, that would just stop the clock dead as soon as the battery was discharged. However, it didn't work because it turns out that the quartz movements in many of these clocks aren't what you'd call super efficient. They... Um, they operate fine at 1.5 volts, but the clock will stop when it gets down to about 1.3, which is rubbish because alkaline batteries, their end of capacity is rated at 0.75 volts, half the starting voltage. So they only use a fraction of the capacity of the battery. However, to do the tests with the nickel metal hydride cells, which have a standard voltage of 1.2 volt, which just wasn't enough, I ended up adding a little arrangement. I interrupted the quartz clock's movement with a reed switch with some windings around it and a resistor just for fine tuning and another battery holder. And with this arrangement um, it puts a constant load at 1.2 volts of 500 milliamps um, which quite conveniently gives a 100 milliamps per minute scale 100 milliamp hour and when it reaches 0.75 volts, fairly accurately, it cuts off. And with that in mind, I decided it was quite useful for testing alkaline batteries too. So I tested a whole range of batteries, mainly from dollar stores, just to see how they compared. And the first I tested were what are called the Bergen packs of zinc chloride cells. Now, I really don't recommend these because... They've got very low capacity. These ones have a capacity of 0.85 amp hour um, for each cell. And they tend to leak when they run flat. If you run these into the ground, if you put these into something like a jewel thief that uses the battery right to the very end, then it will leak. And it will leak zinc chloride, which is extremely caustic and just absolutely destroys electrical contact. So, purely for reference, uh, these ones clocked up 0.85 amp hour. Next came Simply Duracell, not Duracell, but Simply Duracell in Poundland, which is one of our dollar stores, and you get two for a pound. And the date code in these was 2018, and I had to do the test twice. I've used both batteries because the first battery I put in clocked up 400 milliamp hour capacity. That's 0.4 amp hour. That's less than the zinc chloride. I thought, I must be making a you know, something must have happened. So I did the test again, and the other battery in the pack came up with 1.7 amp hour. Now, I've never had a battery fail a test in that little unit there, because it gets placed in a, 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 the same location every time, no vibration, no disturbance, it gets to do its full test. And that suggests in keeping with a lot of feedback I've had from friends regarding Duracell batteries, that quality control is not at its best, and that some batteries are pretty much supplied flat out the packet, even with plenty to go in their date span, so not a good start. Okay. Next up, and these are in capacity order, those ones were actually the lowest um, alkaline. Next up is Poundland's Kodak Extra Life. Now, of course, they're not really made by Kodak. Kodak is just a brand, um, which is applied to, uh, like Mitsubishi, Sony. They're just generic brand brands that are applied to batteries that probably pretty much come from the same factory. And these ones, store. I've used these quite a lot in the past, and these came out at 2 amp hour, which is fairly respectable for a, a dollar store battery. Next up came... 
ordinary Duracell and these ones scored 2.2 .2 amp hour which is okay but not given that you get a third of the batteries for virtually the same capacity of the cheaper ones and I noticed I've never really noticed this before until I looked at the packaging closer it says lasts longer much longer and then it's got a tiny little asterisk next to it and I thought well that's going to compare it to other alkaline batteries isn't it because certainly it doesn't seem to be outlasting them and you look at the very very small print in the back and the wee asterisk says versus a zinc carbon cell well yes it's going to be higher capacity than a zinc carbon cell because zinc carbon is one of the oldest AA technologies zinc carbon is pre-zinc chloride, I mean they're pretty much based in the same chemistry I think zinc chloride has the different electrolyte, I'm not 100% sure but the gist is that they're not even worth comparing so why do they do it? It's worth mentioning that uh, the zinc chloride or zinc carbon cells uh, zinc chloride should I say, they tend to have on the packaging heavy duty, high power and just ignore that, it's also a kick back to the past, it's the older batteries that are replaced, which is mainly electrolyte change I think, the zinc carbon batteries, they had marginally higher energy and higher capacity than those and the downside is that zinc chloride, when, well I've already told you, it leaks um, so really just ignore the fact it says heavy duty, long lasting and so on the only batteries you should be getting are alkaline because they last much longer and they generally don't leak. So next up came Pound World's um, Powercell Ultra Alkaline Batteries. These ones put in a good show. These ones came in at 2.3 amp hour and you get 6 for a pound. <clears throat> so very good result. But the winner, by a surprisingly long chalk, was out of Poundland. And it was a pack of four Fusio Max Endurance. And they say Ultra Performance Alkaline are longest lasting. And I was like, oh yeah, that means it'll last like 1% longer. But in reality, these ones clocked up 2.65 amp hour. That's one of the highest capacities I've ever seen from an alkaline AA cell. So... If you compare how many batteries you get um, versus the t combined energy in them, the winner is the six pack of power cell from Pound World because it gives a combined power of 13.8 amp hours across your six batteries. The worst um, for your money by a very long chalk was the Simply Duracell and they even they print on it Simply Duracell I'd say that's maybe needing changed a little bit I think perhaps they should actually write on them Simply Shit 